Another week, boys, and another major blog post here from Bungie. Season 21 Weapon Changes Preview. Good day, Chris Proctor, Senior Design Lead, here with another Weapon Balance blog. We shipped the 7.0.5 midseason balance update a few weeks back. That update was largely PvP focused and was mainly made up of changes we've been testing in Season 21 and pulled for. As a result, this set of changes is focused on systemic changes in PvE. Now, for Season 21, we've got a substantial number of changes to hip fire reticles, various changes to a bunch of exotic weapons and a few other bits and pieces so let's get into it now starting with weapon reticles we've looked at player feedback around how reticles convey less information at higher field of view information that isn't obvious mid combat and exotic weapons whose perk state can be hard to track and have rebuilt several weapon reticles to address these so starting with the hip fire reticles and field of view the two reticle elements on most weapons illustrate the current cones for auto aim aka bullet bending and accuracy aka air angle using moving circles and crosshairs now these are clamped in size on screen to avoid growing too large or too small and hence blocking the very center of the screen or overlapping too much of your weapon and the action in front of you at default field of view these elements move as your auto aim and accuracy change but at high field of view they typically can't shrink enough to show the current angles resulting in them being fairly static now we rebuilt the reticles for the falling weapon types so they move more visibly at high fov while still conveying the current state of the weapon accurately so fusion rifles hand cannons sidearms and trace rifles we plan to update other weapon reticles in a similar way in a future release shotgun reticles also now scale with field of view such that the reticle will closely match the pellet spread regardless of your selected field of view and note that as of life fall they dynamically scale with shotgun pellet spread angle changes all right so essentially guys easier aiming is what i'm getting from that right more feedback and bungie actually posted a clip right here this is so amazing Thing. Look at Ace of Spades. You see Memento Mori proc there on the left, but looking down sight, you actually see the bullets themselves. Those circles being filled in, indicating max stacks of Memento Mori when you use them with every single shot. This is beautiful stuff here. And again, this is on top of the changes they mentioned previously, where we can actually change the color of our reticles, right? Even when aiming down sights. The goal of this is just to give us more feedback, allowing us to have more tools here to be as accurate as we can possibly be while also feeding us information about the weapon itself now charge meters fusion rifle change and sword guard energy are a critical aspect of these weapons which until now require relying on cues built into the weapons visuals or audio we've updated their hip fire reticles to include this information as well so fusion rifles now have a charge meter under the reticle ah and sword reticles now show the current sword guard energy excellent now experimental aim down science reticle our hip fire reticles are built with technology that lets them scale with weapon auto aim and accuracy but our aim down sight reticles are typically hand built for each specific weapon and don't necessarily show this information now we've been experimenting with an approach that keeps the hand built aesthetics of a weapon sight or scope but replaces the center crosshair or red dot with a variant of the hip fire reticle we decided we'd get this into your hands and see how it feels in the live game before looking into this type of reticle that being shayora's wrath this now has an aim night sight reticle that reacts to the weapon's accuracy and auto aim state and ties into red reticle meaning this will change color when an enemy that's within the weapons engagement range is under the reticle ah that's good feedback right there and look at that guys how do you feel about that what is your thoughts looking at this reticle the texture the light up are you a fan of this personally guys that looks amazing now custom exotic weapon reticles plenty of exotic weapons have perks with states or counts that are important information for players we've added reticle elements to show these to several exotics notes that exotic swords and fusion rifles also benefit from the above charge meter and sword meter elements Elements. Note that some exotic weapons already convey their state very clearly and weren't included in this pass. Now, the specific additions to exotic weapons are charge meter added to exotic weapons whose base weapon type doesn't typically have a charge meter. That includes Devil's Ruin, Salvation's Grip, Grand Overture. Now, perk counters show pips of perk shots, Quicksilver Storm Grenade count, Ace of Spades Memento Mori shot count, Lumina Noble Round shot count, and Traveler's Chosen Gathering Light stacks. Now, perk progress meter shows perk build up the mana core and perk active shows when an exotic perk is active hawkmoon agar scepter terba touch of malice crowstesia trinity ghoul and then the charge meter and perk counter vex mythic class so again all of these things are just feeding you more information whether from the hip or aiming down sights you won't have to do this nonsense of looking to your left or having to break aiming down sights you literally get that information while in the gunfight actively engaging that's beautiful stuff now in general in 
inspection screen improvements. With the release of Season the Deep, we're also doing an overhaul to the way we showcase weapons and other items in the inspection screen with some highly requested improvements. You'll now be able to do the following when previewing weapons. Rotate them around the same way you would a sparrow or piece of armor and added support for ambient VFX to play for weapons that have them. Oh, look at this. You can actually rotate and see the weapon from all angles. Dude, thumbnails are going to be so much easier. I know this seems like a small change, but it is huge, especially if you want to see what an ornament looks like at all angles, right? Now, this applies to your inventory and also when expecting ornaments in the Eververse store. Looky there. These tech improvements have had compounding benefits, enabling us to allow you to rotate ships and preview their contrasts. We've also removed the depth of field blur from our weapon ship and armor preview screens to allow you to see all the angles of your gear better. Yes! We don't like blur, man. Just, just get rid of all of it. Now, full auto melee. Knowing how popular the full auto, now called full auto firing setting was, we've implemented a matching full auto melee setting that allows you to continue melee attacking with your fists, charge melee, your sword, your glaive, or even your roaming super melee by holding down the appropriate input. Yeah, they did go into more detail on this. It's a good thing, but keep in mind, I'm sure it's gonna have some bucks. Even the full auto firing mode has bucks. Sometimes you misfire, sometimes you don't fire. But overall, it is a great system, and I'm so glad they've added that. A full auto melee system is gonna be very nice of us that just wanna fist all of our enemies to death. Now, weapon archetypes, bows, tyranny of heaven stats were always really low, and we're touching these weapons anyway, so we opted to update it and its stats while we were in there. Now, some machine guns. Aggressive submachine guns have surged in PvP and they needed to be brought back into ban. We're doing that in a way that keeps them viable by reducing both base and crit damage a little, requiring a higher precision to reach their optimal time to kill. So we'll reduce base damage from 15 to 14 and increase precision hit multiplier from 1.45 to 1.5, meaning the crit damage goes from 21.8 to 21. Now the Immortal is such a stat monster that no other aggressive SMG can compete. So we brought its range in while allowing it to continue to excel in other areas. So reduce base range value by 10. Interesting. I don't think that's really, I mean, don't get me wrong. The range was nice, but it's target lock, man. Like everything mentioned here is definitely hitting all aggressive submachine guns, but the conversation surrounding time to kill value doesn't really affect Immortal as much considering it has target lock increasing its damage mid gunfight. We'll have to play around and see how that goes. Now in like 196 health guardians, aggressives were able to achieve like a 0.64 time to kill value. Granted, on max resilience guardians, you were roughly looking at a 0.72 TTK. With this change though, you're making it less forgiving. On top of that, you're not going to be able to achieve that 0.64 TTK unlike those six to seven resilience guardians. It's going to drop that down way lower, almost to the lowest bracket of resilience, and it's going to be less forgiving. But again, like I just said a second ago, guys, we're still going to be in a state where Immortal has target lock. Again, we'll test it next season, but it's because of that perk that is able to bypass and break those TTK values. Now, sniper rifles. Sniper rifles are a very safe option, and we don't want to also make them dominant, but there's some room to bring their damage up to improve their fill in PvE. Notes that rapid fire sniper rifles also get a large reserve bump and reduce recoil in season 21 mid-season balance patch yep that's right guys we tested it cloud strike especially is pumping out a lot more damage especially total damage it's very very good now we'll keep an eye on this and may bring them up a little more in the future if this doesn't move the needle so we're increasing pv damage by 10 percent notes is an Aggie's burden hone edge perk will not receive this buff all of the exotic snipers will receive the buff as written though all right so yeah is it not not gonna get it that sucks but cloud strike just got even better whisper just got better darcy Give up on it, fellas. Just stop. Everybody stop. We're going to be doing some damage testing this week. Do not come into the stream telling me Darcy is now meta. It's not. Give up already. But everything else, guys, Succession, if you got it, which is arguably the best in class legendary sniper rifle for PvE, is going to be very deadly. This is going to be a nice bump across the board. Now, Scout Rivals. Long Arm was inadvertently receiving the damage bonus versus minors for exotics. So we've addressed that. It still receives the Scout Rifle PvE damage buff from Season 21 mid-season patch, but I guess it got its damage that it was receiving against miners removed. Dude, that is unfortunate. I had no idea. If that was the case, I would have been using long arm against miners more often. Now, exotic weapons. Oh, we're getting to the juice now, baby. Now, Eyes of Tomorrow's multi-targeted missile volley and adaptive ordnance exotic trait suggests it should be used to kill groups of enemies, but the rocket launcher ammo economy doesn't really allow for that. But what if smart use of the weapon against groups refunded ammo? Killing four targets with a missile volley will now refund one ammo. Oh! 
Oh, that is nuts. Guys, let me just say this, by the way. Eyes of Tomorrow is about to become meta. You know how easy it is to kill four enemies with that rocket launcher? Stupid easy. Secondly, when you kill four or more combatants in a single volley, you're increasing the damage of the next volley. And that is a huge buff in damage. Again, the biggest thing holding this rocket launcher back for us was its ammo economy. But with this change, mother of God, can you imagine solar surge environments? Can you imagine Gambit? Now, Graviton Lance. Graviton Lance's performance feels exotic, but it was easy to miss out on the full damage of a burst because so much of it was back loaded. And we felt the tuning of Revision Zero's heavy round two round burst would be a good fit. So we're increasing the rounds per minute from 257 to now 300, but reduce the burst delay by 20%, which now matches Revision Zero's Hake heavy rounds rate of fire. They also rebalanced the damage per shot, increasing the first shot damage from 9.5 to now 19, that being per body, and 15.7 to 31.4 per crit. Ah, now they decreased the second shot damage from 35.6 per body to now 25.6 and crit damage from 58.7 to 42.3. So the back shot, the second shot is still going to do more damage, but not this substantial difference. Meaning if you happen to miss that second shot, maybe the enemy jumps out of the way. I don't know. You're not losing out as much, still a significant amount, but it's not like, you know, 70% of the damage or whatever that ratio is. I'm very excited about these changes. I know we make a lot of builds. I'm mainly collective obligation. But Graviton Lance is a force to be reckoned with inside of PvE. Now moving on, Jade Rabbit is a strong PvP scout rifle, but it was difficult to keep track of the state of the exotic perk. Yes, it was. And refunding a single ammo just wasn't impressive enough for an exotic. So these changes make the state clearer and provide more reward for precision. So we added buff text to show when Fate of All Fools and its increased body shot damage is active. Also hitting three crits now refunds three shots instead of one. Ah, so meta. Keep in mind, that's not bad for chaining kills in PvP. Doesn't really change the game though inside of PvE. Now, flying around with Mana Core is some silly fun, but we want it to be more rewarding, mobile, and sustainable. With this change, you should be able to remain airborne for longer and be safer while doing so. So we're increasing the catalyst damage resistance from tier three to now tier four. If I'm understanding that correctly, guys, I think that's a 25% damage resist. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Also increase movement speed during hang time and activating the catalyst perk through an airborne kill or sustained damage following an airborne kill now partially refunds the magazine. Guys, we'll try to make mana core work. Again, suspending yourself in the air. I know mana core is built for that, but it's a risky strategy, right? Especially in PvP. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it shakes out. We'll combine it with things like wings. Maybe we can get the extra damage resist on top of that. Perhaps we can become like an air tank. I would love for it to be good. Really, really. Now, Luminous cap on Noble Rounds was five. While working on exotic weapon reticles, we opted to match Ace of Spades, Memento Mori shot count to improve consistency consistency between the two and give Lumina a little buff at the same time. So increase Noble Rounds cap from five to six. That makes sense. Considering Noble Rounds and its exotic catalyst is literally giving you two Noble Rounds, having six just makes sense here. Now, Heart Shadow wasn't quite hitting the fantasy we wanted it to. So we've made it easier to exploit the exotic perks. Damage increase now activates quicker while invisible after 0.25 seconds instead of just one second. And Heart Shadow now weakens upon dealing any damage while the damage increase is active. It's a beautiful sword, guys. I would love to be like, yo, we've got this new GM this week. Fellas, break out thy heart shadows. Let's go ham. And honestly, after the stronghold changes, that could be the case. There may be a play here for heart shadow. We'll just have to see. Now, we love Roland Zero's performance. And with all the attention we've been giving swords, we wanted to spend some time really differentiating it from certain perks on glowing sword dares. The sprinting heavy attack can now be chained into itself once. Also, the sword guard energy cost from each sprinting heavy attack, reduce from 100% to now 50%, and decrease damage from an individual sprinting attack by 25% to compensate. All right, for my speedrunners, let me know how you feel about this. This could be it, right? Is it back? Now, nah, Sweet Business. Sweet Business's performance is a lot of fun, but we felt we could really plus its fun factor and strength by adding some explosions. Now fires explosive rounds every 20 shots. Fewer shots while fully spun up. Holy shit. 
I was literally thinking the other day how we don't have an auto weapon, like an auto rifle, with explosive rounds. Dude, this is nuts. I know Bungie's saying this is gonna be fun. Can you imagine being peppered, especially when it's fully spun up, being peppered with explosive rounds? From sweet business this could actually make it meta no lie and by the way those explosive rounds which do more damage inside of pve i'm assuming is also going to apply here to sweet business now legend of accuracy legend of accuracy hits extremely hard already dealing with some of the highest damage per shot in the game but its ammo reserves run out fairly quickly and you have to be right up on top of your enemies to use it we've relaxed both of these constraints increase total ammo from 12 to 16 and increase maximum projectile distance from 9 meters to now 12 meters that is huge huge guys we made a video already on titan builds to be looking for next season and one of those builds includes no backup plans and legend of accuracy i said it's already good now that they're buffing legend of accuracy and if you happen to have the catalyst and trench barrel oh this thing is gonna pound now tommy's matchbook oh my tommy's matchbook is all about burning yourself so we've updated it to let you burn others as well catalyst updated while overheated sustained fire scorches your target every five shots you apply 14 plus 7 with ember of ashes and Scorch stacks. Dude, that is nuts. Considering the max size here on Tommy's matchbook, you're going to be reaching ignitions so fast. Fellas, if you do not have Axiom War Rig, I advise you get it. This is about to be deadly. Now, no time to explain. Drone wouldn't work against Barrier Champion Shields when it had anti-barrier effect. We fixed that. And also made the drone work with Feeding Frenzy Perk. Wow! So updated the drone to work with anti-barrier. It will break at Barrier Champion Shields and over-penetrate combatant shields. Oh, could it go through a Phalanx Shield? Am I getting that? right also updated drone to work with feeding frenzy from the no time to explain catalyst this also resolved an issue where the feedback for feeding frenzy would always play when the player spawn and then never again all right nice quality of life change although anti-barrier pulse rifle mod is going away next season or i would assume so now skyburn's oath solo 3.0 pass turned out to be too conservative i agree so we brought it up to be more competitive with other scorching options Increase scorch stacks from 3 to 5 and 5 to 10 with Ember of Ashes fragments. Huge! Dude, just in time for Incinerator Snap to get a buff. Dude, that combined with Skyburners, Colonel Mustang is back! Now, Salvation's Grip. Salvation's Grip's performance and utility is entertaining and situationally useful. But as a heavy weapon, it really needs to do some damage without compromising on its identity. So we've rebuilt its functionality using bowling as an inspiration. Say what? Rework to have two firing modes. Charge Shot creates a pattern of stasis crystals, where the number of crystals is no longer dependent on charge time. An uncharged shot is a normal grenade launcher shot, which does more damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. Also added a new perk that reloads the magazine from reserves when you quickly shatter at least three crystals with the uncharged shot. Interesting. Okay, there may be a play here, guys. Shatter damage is no joke. There's a reason why people run bump in DPS phases. Perhaps someone using Salvation's Grip may be a play. Now, Bad Juju. Bad Juju has always been hard to control, and it turns out it was originally set up to use auto rifle recoil. No way. Fix an issue that was causing this weapon to recoil like an auto rifle, making it harder to control. The recoil pattern will now be similar to other pulse rifles massive no lie guys bad juju with a little more consistency would be so good i think this is going to be the play that makes it a powerhouse again inside of pvp and it's in a good archetype really really now fighting lions damage against red bar spiked to massive levels due to a recent bug we've addressed this but note that it still receives the 40 percent damage bonus for exotic primary weapons so we fixed an issue that was causing this weapon to do more damage and intended to red bar combats it was fun while it lasted guys now thunderlord thunderlord has surged in popularity with the release of its catalyst in the season 21 machine gun buff but it shipped with a bug that allowed lightning strikes at a higher frequency than intended against divinity bubbles so we've addressed that note that regular crits are not affected by this change so fix an issue resulting in hits against divinity bubbles counting as two crits instead of one wow all right for my thunderlord bros what this really means you're gonna lose out on damage because of this because a lot of us did use divinity with thunderlord and secondly the auto loading feature so my my opinion you're gonna need actium war rig and secondly grand overture is just better and if you don't believe me we did damage testing on machine guns and grand overture is just better and now it's about to be a lot better now winter bites initial version included an exploitable damage buff which is fixed here i feel like i've heard this before the impact damage has been removed and redistribute it to the detonation damage. And the self-damage scaling has been tuned to account for the increased damage of the detonation. Nothing here about boosting its melee damage again. That's unfortunate. Now, perks. 
Fragile focus is fairly potent, but the perk deactivator was very unforgiving. Bonus lasts until shield popped. Returns when shield regenerates to 100%. That is big. That is massive. Fragile focus actually gives you a very nice bump in range, but would deactivate the moment an enemy even touched you. This may be good here, guys. Really, really. Now, Thresh, Demolitionist, and Pugilist have always granted increased energy on shotgun, fusion rifle, and sniper rifle kills, but Glaze missed out on the bonus until now. So, grant increased energy to Glaze projectile kills. Same as shotguns, fusion rifles, and sniper rifles. Now, Reconstruction has been simplified under the hood so that we can place the perk on more weapons without exceeding perk budgets. This results in a slight change the timing of the perk where the initial timer and the cooldown timer between reloads have been unified. So base perk, 4 seconds. Enhanced perk, 3.5 seconds. Yeah, the timing there was actually mismatched. Before it was like 3.3 seconds after not shooting. And then it was like 3.7 seconds, refilling 10% of the magazine capacity from reserves to double the capacity of your weapon's mag. Again, when they say they unified it, all they mean by that is they essentially made that the same duration between both of those. Now, shoot to loot is already situationally useful, but we've been working for a good way to allow players to interact with orders of power at a distance, and this was an obvious option. So updated to pick up orbs of power, and currently, this only works on direct hits. The ability for the orbs to be picked up with weapon detonations will be added in a future patch. Good. Again, guys, we recommend it shoot to loot and kinetic tremors on hung jury. The reason for that is pretty obvious. Proc kinetic tremors, activate detonations, that will pick up orbs of power, feeding into so many of your abilities, as well as armor charges, surge mods, all that good stuff. Again, though, that won't work at the beginning of the season, but it will be added eventually. Now, the future. We're in the process of redesigning how zoom interacts with damage falloff. Weapons with that weapon type standard zoom value, for example, for SMGs, this would be 14 zoom stats or 1.4 time magnification, will be unaffected by this specific change. But weapons with lower than standard zoom values for their archetype will have their damage falloff buffed. Oh, okay. And weapons with higher than standard zoom values will have their damage falloff reduced. Note that this will only apply to damage falloff. Now, to avoid negatively impacting weapon fill, bonus to aim assist, accuracy, and recoil will still apply. We will also be making a pass on the base damage falloff ranges for several weapon types to make sure that weapon types that previously relied on having above standard zoom to be competitive are not left behind. There's also a big sword update coming with the goal of making guarding substantially more valuable. In the more distant future, we're working on an update to Sparrows that will allow players to use their favorite instead of always on time without touching always on time itself. Yes! Thank God. I want to be able to use other sparrows and still go just as fast as always on time. So what they're saying there is they're going to bump the speed over other sparrows. Now, the main takeaway from that right there, guys, is this zoom change is going to change so many things. The fact that they're actually going to be changing things like aim assist, accuracy, and recoil to mitigate negatively impacting weapons when adjusting zoom, that tells you how big of a scale this change actually is. In my opinion, that sounds even bigger than the AE changes from last year. So guys, let me know in the comments below what you think. Are you happy? Happy about everything you saw here? No lie, man. I am so excited to try Sweet Business. Eyes of Tomorrow is also looking super juiced. Ah! We'll be testing all of these, and we'll also have pre and post testing just to kind of give you an understanding of how much has changed from this season to the next once these changes go live. Feel free to come by our Twitch, guys. We'll be live streaming all of our testing this week and next week as well. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.